The Cape of Good Hope, also known as the Cape Colony Dutch, Kopkoloni, was a British colony in present-day South Africa, named after the Cape of Good Hope. The British colony was preceded by an earlier Dutch colony of the same name, the Kaap de Gaeta Hoop, established in 1652 by the Dutch East India Company. The Cape was under Dutch rule from 1652 to 1795 and again from 1803 to 1806. The Dutch lost the colony to Great Britain following the 1795 Battle of Moisenberg, but had it returned following the 1802 Peace of Amiens. It was reoccupied by the UK following the Battle of Blauberg in 1806, and British possession affirmed with the Anglo-Dutch Treaty of 1814. The Cape of Good Hope then remained in the British Empire, becoming self-governing in 1872, and uniting with three other colonies to form the Union of South Africa in 1910. It then was renamed the Province of the Cape of Good Hope. South Africa became a sovereign state in 1931 by the Statute of Westminster. In 1961 it became the Republic of South Africa and obtained its own monetary unit called the Rand. Following the 1994 creation of the present-day South African provinces, the Cape Province was partitioned into the Eastern Cape, Northern Cape, and Western Cape, with smaller parts in Northwest Province. The Cape of Good Hope was coextensive with the later Cape Province, stretching from the Atlantic coast inland and eastward along the southern coast, constituting about half of modern South Africa. The final eastern boundary, after several wars against the Kosa, stood at the Fish River. In the north, the Orange River, also known as the Garip River, served as the boundary for some time, although some land between the river and the southern boundary of Botswana was later added to it. From 1878, the colony also included the enclave of Walvis Bay and the Penguin Islands, both in what is now Namibia. History Dutch settlement An expedition of the Dutch East India Company VOC, led by Jan van Riebeek established a trading post and naval victualling station at the Cape of Good Hope in 1652. Van Riebeek's objective was to secure a harbour of refuge for Dutch ships during the long voyages between Europe and Asia. Within about three decades, the Cape had become home to a large community of Vrigeliden, also known as Vryburgers. Free citizens, former VOC employees who settled in Dutch colonies overseas after completing their service contracts. Vrybergers were mostly married Dutch citizens who undertook to spend at least 20 years farming the land within the fledgling colony's borders, in exchange they received tax-exempt status and were loaned tools and seeds. Reflecting the multinational nature of the early trading companies, the Dutch also granted Vryberger status to a number of former Scandinavian and German employees as well. In 1688 they also sponsored the immigration of nearly 200 French Huguenot refugees who had fled to the Netherlands upon the Edict of Fontainebleau. There was a degree of cultural assimilation due to intermarriage, and the almost universal adoption of the Dutch language. Many of the colonists who settled directly on the frontier became increasingly independent and localized in their loyalties. Known as Boers, they migrated westwards beyond the Cape Colony's initial borders and had soon penetrated almost a thousand kilometers inland. Some Boers even adopted a nomadic lifestyle permanently and were denoted as Trekboer. The Dutch colonial period was marred by a number of bitter conflicts between the colonists and the Khoisan, followed by the Kosa, both of which they perceived as unwanted competitors for prime farmland. Dutch traders imported thousands of slaves to the Cape of Good Hope from the Dutch East Indies and other parts of Africa. By the end of the 18th century the Cape's population swelled to about 26,000 people of European descent and 30,000 slaves. <inaudible> <inaudible> British conquest In 1795, France occupied the seven provinces of the Netherlands, the mother country of the Dutch East India Company. This prompted Great Britain to occupy the territory in 1795 as a way to better control the seas in order to stop any potential French attempt to reach India. The British sent a fleet of nine warships which anchored at Simon's Town and, following the defeat of the Dutch militia at the Battle of Moisenberg, took control of the territory. The Dutch East India Company transferred its territories and claims to the Batavian Republic the revolutionary period Dutch state in 1798, and ceased to exist in 1799. 
improving relations between Britain and Napoleonic France, and its vassal state the Batavian Republic, led the British to hand the Cape of Good Hope over to the Batavian Republic in 1803, under the terms of the Treaty of Amiens. In 1806, the Cape, now nominally controlled by the Batavian Republic, was occupied again by the British after their victory in the Battle of Blauberg. The temporary peace between Britain and Napoleonic France had crumbled into open hostilities, whilst Napoleon had been strengthening his influence on the Batavian Republic which Napoleon would subsequently abolish later the same year. The British, who set up a colony on 8 January 1806, hoped to keep Napoleon out of the Cape, and to control the Far East trade routes. In 1814 the Dutch government formally ceded sovereignty over the Cape to the British, under the terms of the Convention of London. Topic. British colonisation The British started to settle the eastern border of the colony, with the arrival in Port Elizabeth of the 1820 settlers. They also began to introduce the first rudimentary rights for the Cape's black African population and, in 1834, abolished slavery. The resentment that the Dutch farmers felt against this social change, as well as the imposition of English language and culture, caused them to trek inland en masse. This was known as the Great Trek, and the migrating Boers settled inland, forming the Boer Republics of Transvaal and the Orange Free State. British immigration continued in the Cape, even as many of the Boers continued to trek inland, and the ending of the British East India Company's monopoly on trade led to economic growth. At the same time, the long series of border wars fought against the Kosa people of the Cape's eastern frontier finally died down when the Kosa partook in a mass destruction of their own crops and cattle, in the belief that this would cause their spirits to appear and defeat the whites. The resulting famine crippled Kosa resistance and ushered in a long period of stability on the border. Peace and prosperity led to a desire for political independence. In 1853, the Cape colony became a British Crown colony. In 1854, the Cape of Good Hope elected its first parliament, on the basis of the multi-racial Cape qualified franchise. Cape residents qualified as voters based on a universal minimum level of property ownership, regardless of race. The fact that executive power remained completely in the authority of the British governor did not relieve tensions in the colony between its eastern and western sections. Topic. Responsible government. In 1872, after a long political battle, the Cape of Good Hope achieved responsible government under its first Prime Minister, John Moltino. Henceforth, an elected Prime Minister and his cabinet had total responsibility for the affairs of the country. A period of strong economic growth and social development ensued, and the Eastern Western Division was largely laid to rest. The system of multi racial franchise also began a slow and fragile growth in political inclusiveness, and ethnic tension subsided. In 1877, the state expanded by annexing Griqualand West and Griqualand East. However, the discovery of diamonds around Kimberley and gold in the Transvaal led to a return to instability, particularly because they fueled the rise to power of the ambitious imperialist Cecil Rhodes. On becoming the Cape's Prime Minister, he instigated a rapid expansion of British influence into the hinterland. In particular, he sought to engineer the conquest of the Transvaal, and although his ill-fated Jameson raid failed and brought down his government, it led to the Second Boer War and British conquest at the turn of the century. The politics of the colony consequently came to be increasingly dominated by tensions between the British colonists and the Boers. Rhodes also brought in the first formal restrictions on the political rights of the Cape of Good Hope's black African citizens. The Cape of Good Hope remained nominally under British rule until the formation of the Union of South Africa in 1910, when it became the province of the Cape of Good Hope, better known as the Cape Province. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Governors of the Cape of Good Hope, 1797 to 1910. Topic: British occupation first 1797 to 1804 George McCartney first Earl McCartney 1797 to 1798 Francis Dundas first time acting 1798 to 1799 Sir George Young 1799 to 1801 Francis Dundas second time acting 1801 to 1803 
Topic: Batavian Republic, Dutch colony, 1803 to 1806. Jacob Abraham Uitenhij de Mist (1803–1804). Jan Willem Janssens (1803–1806). Topic: British occupation, second, 1806–1814. Sir David Baird, acting 1806–1807. Henry George Grey, first time, acting 1807. Dupree Alexander, second Earl of Caledon, 1807 to 1811. Henry George Grey, second time, acting 1811. Sir John Francis Craddock, 1811 to 1814. Hun. Robert Meade, acting for Craddock, 1813 to 1814, son of Theodosia, Countess of Clanwilliam. Topic. British colony 1814 to 1910 Lord Charles Somerset 1814 to 1826 Sir Rufain Shaw Donkin acting for Somerset 1820 to 1821 Sir Richard Burke acting 1826 to 1828 Sir Galbraith Lowry Cole 1828 to 1833 Sir Thomas Francis Wade, acting for Durban from the 10th of January 1834, 1833 to 1834. Sir Benjamin Durban, 1834 to 1838. Sir George Thomas Napier, 1838 to 1844. Sir Peregrine Maitland, 1844 to 1847. Sir Henry Pottinger, 1847. Sir Harry Smith, Sir Henry George Wakeland Smith, 1847 to 1852. Sir George Cathcart, 1852 to 1854. Sir Charles Henry Darling, acting 1854. Sir George Grey, 1854 to 1861. Sir Robert Henry Wynyard, first time acting for Grey, 1859 to 1860. Sir Robert Henry Wynyard, second time, acting 1861 to 1862. Sir Philip Edmund Wodehouse, 1862 to 1870. Charles Crawford Hay, acting 1870. Sir Henry Barclay, 1870 to 1877. Henry Bartle Frere, 1877 to 1880. Henry Hugh Clifford, acting 1880. Sir George Cummins Strahan, acting 1880 to 1881. Hercules Robinson, first time 1881 to 1889. Sir Lester Smith, first time acting for Robinson 1881. Sir Lester Smith, second time acting for Robinson 1883 to 1884. Sir Henry de Oily Torrens, acting for Robinson 1886. Henry Augustus Smith, acting 1889. Henry Brome Locke, 1889 to 1895. Sir William Gordon Cameron, first time acting for Locke, 1891 to 1892. Sir William Gordon Cameron, second time acting for Locke, 1894. Hercules Robinson, second time, 1895 to 1897. Sir William Howley Goodenough, acting 1897. Sir Alfred Milner, 1897 to 1901. Sir William Francis Butler, acting for Milner, 1898 to 1899. Sir Walter Helly Hutchinson, 1901 to 1910. Sir Henry Jenner Scoble, acting for Helly Hutchinson, 1909. The post of High Commissioner for Southern Africa was also held from the 27th of January 1847 to the 6th of March 1901 by the Governor of the Cape of Good Hope. The post of Governor of the Cape of Good Hope became extinct on 31 May 1910, when it joined the Union of South Africa. <laughs> Prime Ministers of the Cape of Good Hope 1872 The post of Prime Minister of the Cape of Good Hope also became extinct on 31 May 1910, when it joined the Union of South Africa. Topic. Demographics Topic. 1904 census Population figures for the 1904 census. Source 
Topic. See also. Parliament of the Cape of Good Hope. Cape Colonial Forces. Cape Government Railways. Cape Qualified Franchise. Topic. References. Topic. Sources. Beck, Roger B. 2000. The History of South Africa. Westport, C.T., Greenwood. ISBN 0-313-30730-X. Davenport, T.R.H., and Christopher Saunders 2000. South Africa, A Modern History, 5th ed. New York, St. Martin's Press. ISBN 0-312-23376-0. Elborn, Elizabeth 2002. Blood Ground, Colonialism, Missions, and the Contest for Christianity in the Cape Colony in Britain, 1799-1853. McGill Queen's University Press. ISBN 0-7735-2229-8. Le Corder, Basil Alexander 1981. The War of the Axe, 1847, Correspondence between the Governor of the Cape Colony, Sir Henry Pottinger, and the Commander of the British Forces at the Cape, Sire George Barclay, and others. Brenthurst Press. ISBN 0-909079-14-5. Mabin, Allen Recession and its Aftermath, The Cape Colony in the 1880s. University of the Witwatersrand, African Studies Institute. Ross, Robert, and David Anderson 1999. Status and Respectability in the Cape Colony, 1750-1870, A Tragedy of Manners. Cambridge University Press. ISBN 0-521-62122-4. Thiel, George McCall 1970. History of the Boers in South Africa, or, The Wanderings and Wars of the Emigrant Farmers from their Leaving the Cape Colony to the Acknowledgement of their Independence by Great Britain. Greenwood Press. ISBN 0-8371-1661-9. Van der Merwe, P. J., Roger B. Beck The Migrant Farmer in the History of the Cape Colony. Ohio University Press. ISBN 0-8214-1090-3. Worden, Nigel, Elizabeth Van Hanningen, and Vivian Bickford Smith Cape Town, The Making of a City. Cape Town, David Phillip. ISBN 0-86486-435-3 External links <inaudible>